Welcome back to your Hilltopper preview show. We're here talking men's soccer with Hilltoppers head coach Brian Young. Coach Young, thank you for joining us here today. I wanted to ask you, uh, after last season you had very good success, once again winning the conference. You guys were picked to repeat as Heartland Conference champions. Does that add any pressure to your preparations for this coming season? Well, I, th I think polls are um, certainly nice at the end of the year, uh, but being picked the preseason favorite, I think uh, our guys really enjoy that um, in regards to kind of having a, a goal to set, um, which is always for us to win the Heartland Conference and to try to get a bid to the NCAA tournament. Um, so for us, that's always our expectation every year when we start our preseason. And um, it doesn't add that much more pressure. I, th I think, if anything, it, it gives us a, a target goal. Coach, you're talking about trying to earn that bid to the NCAA championship, and a lot of people out there don't realize that uh, playing in the Heartland Conference does not get you an automatic qualifying bid to play in the NCAA playoffs. So barring that, I noticed that your schedule is very tough, especially at the beginning. Could you elaborate more on the schedule, reasons why you might have picked those games? Yeah. For the fans out there, absolutely. Um, and, and again, it's for Division Two for everywhere in the country. Uh, there's no automatic qualifiers. We're as a coaching group, we're trying to work on that. But um, in regards to our schedule, um, I try to play the best schedule possible uh, outside of our Heartland Conference schedule, um, mainly because it's a good experience for every player to play against the best teams that we can possibly play. And then uh, for us, in order for us to make the tournament, um, the stronger our schedule is, the more beneficial is to, to the committee to make a decision to allow us to go. Obviously, you can have a great schedule, but you need to get results as well. Um, and, it, and it is pretty front and loaded in regards to our non-conference opponents are outstanding. Um, we have a lot of uh, nationally ranked teams, a lot of teams, two, one team that won the national championship, the la two national championships in the last, I think, five years or so. Um, but I, I think our guys are really excited uh, by every schedule that we have. Um, and, and certainly for this year, the way it lies out, you know, we have a couple home games against some very good teams from Colorado. Then we actually go back to Denver to play against um, Regis, who was highly ranked last year, and as well as a really good Metro State team. Um, and then we come back, I think, and go to travel to play in a difficult place with Midwestern. But uh, but I think this year, you know, we, we've we were a very young team last year, but uh, we've improved a lot uh, tactically and physically and, and mentally um, with our returning players. And I think some of the younger players have really done a good job of this preseason so I think you know we're, we're, we're still two weeks out um, but we're really excited about um, the opportunity to play against some outstanding talent and then that will kind of let us know how we are and then obviously with our Heartland uh, schedule it's always a challenge in our league but but I would say arguably we probably have one of the toughest uh, non-conference schedules in the country. Coach I wanted to talk to you about the players you had a relatively young squad last season but a lot of them are returning yes you did lose some key members but what are your expectations for the new guys that are coming in to assimilate into the squad? Well, I think the good part is when you, whenever you have good leadership, and we had excellent leadership with Gavin Bruce and James Martin uh, from last season, it's it's very hard to replace. Um, the, the the best part about the situation we're in is that both Gavin and, and um, James Martin are, are now assistant coaches for me. So to be honest, it's the best of both worlds. We're getting a lot of good leadership and, and a lot of good instruction from our staff from players that have achieved All-American status. And so that makes our staff even that much more um, better, I believe. Um, and then in regards to kind of the overall team, I think, like you said, uh, the team is much more mature now, um, both on the field and, and off the field. And I think with their leadership, it should be easy for the younger players to assimilate. Um, but, you know, Matt McLaughlin is by far our hardest working player um, in the classroom, but also on the soccer field. And he's going to be our captain this year, um, and that he he always sets a great example. So, I think although there's big shoes to fill from the the players we lost, I think that a lot of those guys that are younger have learned from the experiences that you know James and um, Gavin had experienced and, and passed on, and and we get some new um, fresher legs in there and fresher minds with the younger players coming in. But to be honest, uh, I think a lot of the incoming freshmen um, are very mature. Things where I, I believe that. Uh, the class combined with the returning players um, is, you know, it's made my preseason much easier this year. Is there a possibility for a lot of competition to be played? I know you probably have somebody like John Kashik already established in goal, but how is the competition looking for other positions on the starting 11? Yeah, I, I think that, um, I think that's one of the best parts about this preseason is that uh, going into it, you know, we felt like we were a couple players deep in each position. And it's always good when it's on your whiteboard and you're moving magnets around with players' names on it and with a depth chart. But uh, the, the reality is, is we are quite deep, um, and that makes it a great experience for the coaching staff, but also for the players to know that they need to work hard every day um, and kind of listen to what we're saying as coaches and implementing game plans and 
training sessions. And so uh, with, the, with the depth of the roster, it allows us, one, to compete for spots. And, and that's certainly in goal to, you know, to our back line, to our midfielders and, and our strikers that we play. Um, but it's also something where um, our players you know, also need to know that I if anybody has an injury or picks up a, a knock here and there, that we're able to replace that player with someone that's probably just as good. And, and for, for as a team, that's always good to know. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen, um, but it does happen in, in the game. Coach, you have obviously a good group of players returning. Besides somebody like John Kashuk that might already be suited in goal, what is the competition looking like for the other spots in the starting eleven? Yeah, I think, um, again, no, no position's uh, secure. So I, I think that with John, he's very self-motivated, um, and he's done a very good job. Uh, this year, him and Danny Raleigh were able to play with the Austin Aztecs, and they won the PDL championship. So for John, he's got a bit of a head start on the other keepers, but they've been doing very well in training uh, for the preseason. And, but it, I think for the returning players, they, they had a, the luxury um, of playing some excellent teams in the spring, uh, this, this past spring, uh, where we played uh, the – San Antonio Scorpions, which is a professional team in preseason, as well as the um, PDL champions, the Austin Aztecs, uh, as well as Laredo Heat. So we played against some outstanding competition in the spring. So players that didn't get a lot of minutes maybe last fall were able to get full games in, and I think that that really helped them um, get game time, uh, us to get game film, um, and then for them to mature a little bit. Uh, with that said, I think with the preseason, um, and before, we, you know, even on our whiteboard, we had a lot of magnets with – depth charts and those kind of things, and, and I think that it's always good on paper, uh, but during our preseason, I, I really do feel like we're deep in a couple, in every position, we're a couple guys deep, um, which is an excellent thing for a coach, um, barring, you know, injuries and those kind of things. I think that it creates tons of uh, uh, competition for the spots uh, on the field. So as of right now, you know, there's not really a secure uh, starting lineup, but, it, but I do feel uh, very confident that, again, if, you know, if I had to play one through 18 guys um, on the roster, uh, that we have, I think that they could all do a wonderful job. Um, but with the assimilation part, I, I believe that the uh, you know James Martin and Gavin Bruce uh, from last year set a good example, and Matt McLaughlin's uh, taking their spot as a captain, and he, he's shown some extra leadership, uh, excellent leadership in the preseason. And I, I do believe that the freshmen uh, as well are very mature. Um, from my experience, the last 10 years, they, they've come in with a good work ethic, um, and they've been very attentive in meetings. And you can see that in the preseason matches that we played, and also in the scrimmages. So. Uh, I'm very uh, excited for you know for that game day to put down the starting eleven. But right now, you know, we're, we're not sure who it's going to be, uh, which isn't a bad thing in our spot uh, because of the the amount of um, excellent players that we have. Well, coach, it's going to be a fantastic season. We're already excited here, and I know the fans at home are excited as well. So if you have a chance, please come out to Lewis Chen Family Field and take in the game. And again, Coach Brian Young, thank you again for your time. Thank you. Hey, welcome back, folks. I'm Justin Simmons, along with Sports Information Director here at St. Edwards University, Logan Lawrence, and we're talking men's soccer. So, Logan, let me ask you, the Hilltoppers are picked to repeat as conference champions. I would believe that you think that's a fair assessment. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good assessment. They've got a lot coming back. Um, they uh, they won the championship last year, uh, narrowly uh, uh Defeating uh, Texas A&M International, a very tough uh, Dust Devil squad down in Laredo, uh, won by half a game, I believe. Um, very hard for, um, conference race between the two teams, uh, and the whole league itself is getting better. Um, and of course, the conference has changed a little bit since last year because now there's four new teams added into the mix, and all four teams, uh, yet they can't compete for the conference title. Uh, the games count as conference matches, and so it's no longer a home and home home against these teams. It's uh, it's just one game against all the teams, and so it's it's a, a pretty daunting schedule because you're not able to get a return game at home if you were to slip up on the road. Uh, but uh, Coach Young and the Hilltoppers have uh, done a good job of uh, restocking the shelf, uh, if you will, and um, I think the outlook is great for the Hilltoppers on the men's soccer side. Well, Logan, you mentioned restocking, and besides a few players that are probably pretty much penciled into the starting lineup, Coach Young made it seem that there's going to be some competition along the way for those new players. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's always competition um, throughout the uh, year, especially when you're starting uh, in preseason practice as they are now. Uh, you don't want anybody to get too complacent uh, with their role on the team because uh, your, your, your role could change as the year goes on. Uh, you want each player to be pushing each other to, uh, to uh, take that next step. Um, and that, that next step is to win conference and, and hopefully get to regionals. Uh, the Hilltopper uh, men's soccer team um, – have not been since 1999, and that's something that there's no automatic bids in Heartland Conference. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a at-large bid only uh, for the NCAA Division II, and so um, 
you got to schedule good opponents. You have to play well in those matches. And uh, the Hilltoppers, I think, uh, have a deep enough roster this year to that uh, that will, you know, cause some competition between the uh, players, uh, healthy competition, if you will, um, and uh, push these guys forward uh, to the next step. Uh, uh, some of the players uh, you uh, you talk about that are returning that are it could be keys to this year's season um, is uh, of course uh, goalkeeper John Kashik. Uh, he has been a starter for the last two years. Uh, broke school record for shutouts uh, last year. Um, he has been pretty solid uh, between the pipes out on the field. And uh, he had a lot of experience this summer with the Austin Aztecs. Uh, it's a local team who won the uh, the, the uh, PDL championship. Um, first time in, in, in the history of the uh, of the uh, the program. Uh, along with Daniel Riley, who also was part of the Aztecs this summer and got a lot of experience. And Daniel Riley, of course, is the returning Heartland Conference Player of the Year. Uh, so you got those two guys returning. Uh, Riley, of course, plays up top at forward position, led the team in goals, led the conference in goals. Um, and then you also have Andy Fox. Uh, he's going to be a junior. He's an outside mid, uh, left-footed, so uh, very good on the left wing there. And uh, some guys you have to replace, uh, Gavin Bruce, James Martin, uh, two All-Americans within the past two years. Um, however, they're part of the staff, as Coach Young said. Uh, you know, it's good that they can they – can, uh, Contribute with their knowledge to the to the newcomers, and of course help solidify uh, the positions they played. James, of course, being the midfield, and Gavin was a uh, part of the. He was a central central defender, and so that's that's good as well. Um, so I mean, the Hilltoppers have a lot of good things going for them. They uh, are poised to make a run at the Heartland Conference tournament and to also compete well in those in those regional matchups that could push them forward to their first um, regional bid uh, in since '99, as I said. Logan, you mentioned that there isn't a automatic bid to the NCAA tournament in the Heartland Conference. So Coach Young has taken it upon himself to have a pretty difficult schedule uh, at the very beginning of the season. You think you can elaborate on that just a little bit for the folks at home? Of course, yeah. Uh, within the uh, South Central region uh, consists of the Lone Star Conference, the Heartland Conference, and the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. And the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference uh, is very strong. Uh, the first four games of the year are against opponents from that conference, uh, Fort Lewis, uh, you got uh, Colorado Mines, you got Metro State, and you got Regis. All four of those teams could very well be the regional one of the three re- regional representatives in this com- in this region. Um, two of those are at home. Of course, we start with Mines and Fort Lewis. Uh, Fort Lewis won the national championship uh, within the past three years. Uh, then we go on the road to Denver against Metro State and Regis. Uh, they made that trip before uh, and uh, didn't fare too well. Uh, you know, you're playing at an altitude up there in Denver as well. Uh, the altitude's a lot higher, Mile High City. Uh, Regis, which was the top team in the region last year, along with Incarnate Word, um, it's going to be a very tough matchup. So the first four matches right out of the gate, the Hilltoppers are facing some of the best teams in the country. Of course, as I said, the the conference schedules after that. Hopefully these games against these regional opponents can prepare the Hilltoppers for that. But they need good results in those matches as well. Well, well, everybody's really excited for the season to start. They're looking good on paper. Hopefully they'll be looking good as well on the pitch. So make your way out to Lewis Chen Family Field. This has been your men's soccer preview. <laughs>